Hey folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. You know, I've told you numerous times, those of you that join me on Sunday mornings for sharing the word, I tell you, I'm not a preacher and I'm really not. I'm just a truck driver, just a regular person. Happen to be a Christian. Happen to believe in my Lord. Uh, try to share his word. And a lot of times the stuff I get comes off the internet. Comes from friends of mine that are Christians. Comes from all kinds of sources. Including the Bible. Including the Father and the Son. Today, while I was sitting over there in my chair relaxing, for the you that don't know, I've taken a week off. Uh, good Lord put a word in my hand through one of my Christians, brothers or sisters. I don't even remember now who shared it. But he put it upon my heart to share it with you, and then I want to talk to you a little bit. Uh, the church had no budget. Interesting. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. That's Acts 3 6. Uh, 3, 6. I started to say 3 16. 3 6. He was talking to a beggar. Think about it. Jesus prepared his disciples to change the world. He did. But he gave them no dollar budget. Nope. What do you need to do God's will that you don't already have? Beggars rarely need what they seek. They are needy, however. At a certain point, money has little to to no utility. I dare say it is worse. At a certain point, money actually gets in the way and is a hindrance. What we think we need and what we really need are often two different things. God knows the difference and is ready to supply the truly necessary. Yes, we are surrounded by broken people that think money is all they need. Wrong. It is Jesus. He makes us truly and, and uh, fulfilled. They had another word I can't pronounce. The great thing about sharing Jesus is that you actually have him after you share him. In fact, you have more intimacy and filling of his spirit than before you gave him away. The giving of Jesus, blessings, has two benefactors. The one given the gift and the giver. This is the circle of life. There is something comforting that in God's real plan for the planet, money plays such a small role. If the disciples had needed money, Jesus would have left it with his followers. He ascended and soon thereafter visited them and gave them the Holy Spirit, our great and only necessary resource is God himself. Peter didn't have money. Why do leaders in the church today need it? Why do they solicit for cash? Do we ever see Peter reminding people to pay their tithes to himself and the church buildings? We are surrounded by the lame that don't need to hit the lottery. They need Jesus. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. You know, I read that today, and several thoughts came through my head. Imagine that, I'm trying to get rid of it there. Uh, first off, 
I will admit that there have been times that I have asked you all, uh, not necessarily on my Sunday morning sharing the word, but in the process of keeping this channel alive, I have asked you all to buy some of my t-shirts. Uh, very few have. I've asked you all to go to Patreon and uh, help support my channel through there. Very few have. Uh, I've solicited help for a brother that was in need. A couple of them over the four years or so I've been up. Only one or two gave. So I understand soliciting money. Uh, I've been on both sides of it. I've been on this side where I do need a little money to help. Well, let me rephrase that. I would like a little money to help keep this ministry going, this YouTube channel. Uh, is this YouTube channel going to stop without it? No. The good Lord has seen fit where I make enough money where I'll keep this going. Okay. So I don't have to solicit tithing, help, or any of that. I do. And I'm not belittling those that have bought the t-shirts. Thank you. I'm not belittling those that have signed up on Patreon and they make a, a monthly donation. Thank you. By all means, thank you. Uh, I don't have to have it. You know, the channel will keep going. Do some of the brick and mortars need money? Yeah, they need some. However, I've seen some of the buildings that they have built to impress man. Because you're not going to impress God with buildings. You ain't going to do it. Uh, some of them go to extremes where certain faiths think that the church that they're building is a place for God to come stay in when he comes back to earth. I'm sorry. I didn't see any place in the Bible where it told us uh, in the New Testament and all of that to build a church, a building for God to live in. In the Old Testament, yes, he gave instructions. There's no doubt that he told them, build this and build this, and build it to these sizes, this material. He laid it all out for them. This is what I want. And they built it. They did what they was instructed. I've not seen anywhere else in the Bible where it instructs us to build God a modern-day place. Sorry, I don't see it. And those, if I have any of those faiths on here that think they're supposed to do that, please educate me. By all means, educate me. All right. So, yeah, we, pr we probably should help support our churches. I'm not telling everybody not to give tithes and all that. I'm not doing it. But these preachers you see on TV that live in mansions, fly around in jets, wear Rolexes, and these high dollar suits, do you think that's what Jesus was wanting to happen with his work? I seriously doubt it. Just my opinion. I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm just a man of God. Now, we're all locked down right now because of this virus. Now, I could be out working legally. I could. However, I'm staying at home simply because I have a lot of compromising health issues that makes me more vulnerable to this virus. So I have elected to stay home. My company seems to be okay with it. Now, is money an issue? In this day and age, yes. I'm taking vacation time. Me and Grandma had plans for it down the summer or down the road in summer. However, guess what? 
My bills will come around due. So, of course, money's an issue. Uh, with my company, I'm sure they would rather me be driving than sitting at home. Money's an issue. Right now, if you watch TV, which I watch a lot of TV, I've been cutting back on my news. Uh, I don't even know if they passed the bill today. Oh, excuse me. This is Tuesday. As of this morning, they hadn't, and they wasn't even sure if they'd vote on it today. I'll have to watch it here before I go to bed and see if they voted on it. They had not voted on it. Why? Because of money. Some want to do this with the money. Some want to do that. It's a big argument over money. Now, we are told that money is the root of all evil. We're not told that money is evil. Money is the way of the world. And it has been, probably if you went back to the caveman days, they probably had pretty stones they was trading. I don't know. But I know money goes back a lot farther than I do. And money is not evil. Money is the root of greed. Greed is evil. Money can be a root of a lot of things. Greed is the easiest that comes to mind when we start speaking about these political maneuvers that are going on. Everybody being stranded at home. Everybody missing out on work. Passing this stimulus bill. It's all about money. Money, money, money. Yeah, we need money. I'm not belittling those that are at home needing money. Not belittling those that are worried about next month's bills. I'm right there with you. I might be better off than some of you. I'm definitely not as well off as some of you. I've seen that on posts where people have made posts about this stimulus package, trying to poke fun at us folks that live paycheck to paycheck. I've seen some of the very rude comments. Guess what? Some of us, before it's over with, will need help. That's all there is to it. Uh, you know, while we're down during this lockdown, this stay in place order, whatever you want to call it, while we're doing this, I can tell you something that don't require money. It don't require money for you to sit down with your family. Try doing a little bit of Bible reading. Serious. Turn off the old idiot box over there. Have the children put away their video games, their telephones, whatever they're playing on. Unless you're going to have them read the Bible off of it. Break out your old paper Bible over there or download a digital Bible. And do a little bit of the reading of the Word. Did you hear what that said a while ago? You can give away Jesus' gift and or the gift of Jesus and you can still keep it. It's still yours. Every Sunday that I get on here and I share the word with y'all, I'm giving you the word. I'm giving you Jesus. I'm giving you that chance with Jesus. But guess what? I've still got him. He's still with me. He's still mine. I'm still his. Why don't you share that with your children? Why don't you give your children or whoever, even if it's just you, give you, your spouse, your parents, give whoever you can a little bit of Jesus. And you'll be better for it.
it'll make you feel better and it'll make him feel better about you. It might help them loved ones out. You might plant that seed. Have you watched my videos about planting seeds? Something as simple as taking a few minutes, have each person in your family read 5, 10, 15 minutes worth of the Bible. And what will it take you? If there's four of you, 15 minutes, that's an hour. And then maybe talk about it a little bit. Maybe discuss it. In this day and age of computers, if you don't understand what you just read, Ask the computer on that, that Google search or Siri or, or whoever, Albert, whoever you ask questions of, ask them. What does Acts 6.6 6 mean? What is the translation of what the Bible is saying in Acts 10.6? Romans 10.10. 10? That's a good one. You know, instead of getting on Facebook and sharing a bunch of hateful stuff, which I've been seeing, why don't you share a little bit of love? He's got a whole bunch of it. Instead of worrying about money, how about putting your faith in him and he'll take care of us? I've got my faith planted in him. Regardless what the outcome is down here on earth. Regardless. I could still catch this coronavirus. I could still die from it. Regardless what happens down here. I've got my faith in him. He's going to handle what's best for Papa Joe. I would like to ask you all to take a little bit of time while we're all locked down, while you're slowing down, to stop and have a good old-fashioned uh, a meeting with the Lord. A revival is what I was looking for there. Have a good old revival with the Lord. With you and whoever you can get in it. And take a little bit of time over these next few days while you're locked down, to how about trying to share a little bit of his word? Share a little bit of his love. He's got plenty of love to go around. You can share all kinds of it. Folks, I hope, hope this helped you out a little bit. Better yet, I hope some of y'all actually give it a whirl. Remember, good Lord loves you, and so do I. I can only point you to him. If you go to him, oh, can he do things in your life? Can you do things through his? Remember what Jesus told us before he left? You will be able to do greater things than I. And what he meant is if you go to him in his name, ask the Father in the Son's name, you can do greater things than he. Y'all have a blessed evening now. God bless. Bye.